my name is Harsh and today we are going to discuss the sixth problem from CP31 sheet by TLE eliminators under the 1100 rating range. So let's go to CP31 sheet by TLE eliminators. You can see we have 1100 parameter ticked and here is a clickable link to your problem. So let's move on to the problem. So the name of the problem is Deja Vu. So the problem reads like this, you are given an array A of length n consisting of positive integers and you and an array X of length Q also consisting of positive integers. Now there are Q modifications. On the ith modification for each j such that aj is divisible by 2 power xi, you are adding 2 power xi minus 1 to aj. And note that the value of xi ranges from 1 to 30 and is a positive integer that is not exceeding 30 basically. So xi is a positive integer that is not exceeding 30 and for every you are just iterating over all the values of the array q and for every i such that aj that is any element of the array if it is divisible by 2 power xi you are adding 2 power xi minus 1 to aj. After all modification queries you need to output the final array. You can look up to the constraints. You have n and q of the order of 10 power 5. Values in the array a is of the order of 10 power 9. And values in the array q is of the order of 30. So it's it lies between 1 and 30. And sum of n and sum of q over all the test cases does not exceed 2 into 10 power 5. Okay. So let's understand our question with the help of this particular example. So let's take this example. So, you have this particular example 5, 3, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. This is basically your array A. So, size of the array A is 5 and size of the array Q is 3. This is something that is given to you. And let's see what's the array Q that is given. It is... 2, 3, 4. So it is 2, 3, 4. Okay. So now what you are doing? What is actually the what the actual process is? The process is first of all you take the first element from this array Q. This is your array Q. You take the first element of this array Q. This is your initial array 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So let me write it down once again. 1, 2, 3, 4, so you take the first element that is 2, go to each and every element and if that particular element is divisible by 2 power 2, just remember, you are checking that if that's this particular element is divisible by 2 power whatever the value in qi is, so 2 power 2, you are adding 2 power 2 minus 1 to that array. So basically if the element is divisible by 2 power xi or 2 power basically qi, if the element is divisible by 2 power qi, then you are adding 2 power qi minus 1 to the element, to that particular element, okay. So let's check, let's check over here. Okay, so the first element is not, the first element is 2, so you will check that which all elements are divisible by 4. So you can see 1 is not divisible by 4, 2 is not divisible, 3 is not divisible, yeah, 4 is divisible by 4. So what you will do to this 4 you will add 2 power 2 minus 1 that is basically 2 power 2 minus 1 is basically 2 power 1 that is equals to 2 so this 4 will change to 2 now 4 plus 2 basically this 4 will change to 4 plus 2 that is equals to 6 and again this particular element is divisible by 2 power qi so again to this element you will add 2 power qi minus 1 so it will also get changed to 4 plus 2 that is equal to 6 and job for this particular element is done. Now you will move on to the next element of this queue that is 3. You will check that okay which all elements are divisible by 2 power 3 that is 8. Will you get any element that is divisible by 8? The answer is no. So you will not do any operations for this particular 3. Now again you will check for all these elements that which all elements are divisible by 2 power 4. You will not find any element that is divisible by 2 power 4. So you will not modify the array once again. 
and this will be your final array. So question says you that you are given the initial array. You are given this array Q as well. Just go over all the elements of this array Q. And if the particular element in the array A is divisible by 2 power QI, add 2 power QI minus 1 to it. Once you are done traversing over this entire array Q, so just output the answer. So in the question, you can see that this array Q is nothing but uh, this array X and Q are actually the same. So in the question, they have given you as array X, which is of size Q. So the array, the array Q that I was talking of is nothing but that array X only. Okay. So don't get confused by that. So this is actually what the question is. Now looking up to the constraints, if you look, you have n of the order of, that is the size of this initial array of the order of 10 power 5 and size of this array that is x is of the order of 10 power 5 once again. That is q is of the order of 10 power 5. So tell me, if you are going over all the elements of this array x and you are for every particular element, you are going to each and every element of this array a and checking that okay, that particular element is divisible or not, if divisible add 2 power xi minus 1 to it, something like this you are doing. What would be the time complexity in that case? Wouldn't you feel it will be nothing but big O of n into q? Because for every element of q, you will be traversing over the entire array. Now, tell me what's the expected time complexity for this problem is. Since n is of order of 10 power 5, q is of order of 10 power 5, so something like n log q, something like n log n, something like n square root n, something like q log n, something like this will always work, but you have to restrict your time complexity within this. Something like this will never work. You can never have time complexity of big O of n square, big O of n q. Com time complexity of like this can't be achieved because if you are doing n q, that is basically 10 power 5 multiplied by 10 power 5. So this requires 10 power 10 operation. That is something that you can't do, right? It will definitely produce you so you have to think of something that works in that works within this range so how you can do this now so one thing is clear you can't brute force over the solution that is you can't traverse over the entire array x and for each and every element traverse over the array a this is something that you can't do so if the number is divisible by 4 so i know it will be divisible by 2 it will be divisible by 1 as well like uh, if let's suppose you have a number 16 and you know that okay it is divisible by 4 so you know that okay it is divisible by 2 as well it is divisible by 1 as well but if you have now number something like this that is divisible by 4 are you sure that it will be divisible by 8 as well or 16 as well are you sure of this tell me sorry for that previous mistake sorry for that so if a number is divisible by 4 that is 2 power 2 so we know that okay the number will be divisible by 2 power 1 as well 2 power 0 as well but can we be sure that a number will be divisible by 2 power 3, 2 power 4 or something like that? Can we be sure of that? Tell me. We can't be sure of that, isn't it? Why? Because if I let's suppose tell you that a number is uh, 4. Okay. Or well, let's suppose take number as 12. So I know this particular number is divisible by 4. Now, since it is divisible by 4, it will be divisible by 2 and well, 1 as well. That is with the lower powers of 2 as well. But I am sure that it, uh, I can see that it is not divisible by 8. And if it is not divisible by 8, it is not divisible by 16 as well. So what I can infer from this? I can infer that if a number is divisible by some power of 2, so it will always be divisible by the lower powers of 2 as well and it may or may not be divisible by higher powers of 2. This is the one observation that we made till now. Okay. Now tell me one thing. If I say you that a number is divisible by 8 right now. Okay. If I say you that a number is divisible by 8, let's suppose the number is 16. So I know that this number is divisible by 8. Do you all agree that this is divisible by 16 as well? It is divisible by 16 as well. It is, it is quite evident. Now tell me, if let's suppose my xi was equal to 8. Sorry. 
my xi was equal to 3. So what I saw that okay the number is divisible by 2 power 3 that is equal to 8. Once it is divisible by 8 what I am adding to this number? I am adding 2 power xi minus 1 here. So once I add 2 power xi minus 1 that is equal to 4 to this number this number becomes 20 and now the thing and the craziest thing over here is that this number will now will now not be divisible by 8 or any higher powers of 2. This is 2 power 3. Now this number will never be divisible by 2 power 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And why is this actually happening? Let me tell you. If you represent any number in its binary representation, let's suppose this is the number. Okay. I can say that this number is divisible by 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3 and 2 power 4. But this number, what is this number? If I tell you, what is this number? This number is 6, uh, this is 2 power 0, that is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, right? Isn't it? These are the powers of these bits. So, what is this number? This number is nothing but 48. Okay. So, I can say that this number is divisible by 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4, but this number is not divisible by 2 power 5. And how I was too sure of this without calculating even the values by looking just a binary representation. How I, how I was too sure of that. I was too sure because for a number to be divisible by 2 power 1, you should have 1 0 at the end. For a number to be divisible by 2 power 2, you should have at least 2 zeros at the end. For a number to be divisible by 2 power 3, you should have at least two uh, 3 zeros at the end. For a number to be divisible by 2 power 4, you should have at least four zeros at the end and similarly for the number to be divisible by 2 power 5 you should have five zeros at the end which is not over here so I was clear that okay the number is not divisible by 2 power 5 or any higher powers of 2. Now tell me if this is the number if this is the number and I know that okay it is divisible by 2 power 4 now I know because it has four zeros at the end. Now if I if my xy xi was 4 so I saw okay that this particular number is divisible by 2 power xi. So I am going to add 2 power xi minus 1 to it. Once I do that, do you all agree that my this particular bit will change to 1? Once I add 8 to this, this particular bit will change to 1. And can I say now it will never be divisible by xi equals to 4 or higher powers of 4. It was not divisible by higher powers of 4 before as well. But now after adding it with 2 power 3, it is not divisible by higher powers of 3 as well. So basically it is not divisible by 2 power 4 as well. So what is actually the basic observation in this question? The basic observation is if in any element, if in any element, if let's suppose I have performed the operation with xi equals to 5. That is if the number was divisible by 2 power 5, I was adding 2 power 5 minus 1, that is 2 power 4 to it. If I have if I have done operation with 2 power 5, do you all agree? Now for that particular element, for any xi greater than equals to 5, I will never modify that element. Do you all agree? So extending this idea for the for all the elements, if I say you. If I say you that if let's suppose initially my xi is 5 and I performed the operation with 5 in the entire array. So now if I get xi as 6, 7, 8 or any value greater than equal to 5, even 5 as well, any value greater than equals to 5, in that case I will never modify this array A. This is actually the thing that we are going to use in this question. This is actually the logic that we are going to use. So let's see the code and then we can discuss the time complexity as well. So what we are doing, first of all we are taking the number of test cases as input. Then we take the values of n and q as input. We construct an array a of size n, take input of array a. Then we construct an array x of size q and take input of array x. Now do you all agree if I have performed an operation with some value, let's suppose 5. So after that I will never perform value, perform the operations with values greater than equals to 5. That is basically the values greater than equal to the previous value that I have chosen. So what I did was, 
since I know that the maximum value in this array Q is 30, so I initialized my previous value to 31. So what I am doing is, I am iterating over all the values of this x. If xi is greater than or equal to previous, I am simply continuing because I know that with this xi, I, I, I will never modify my array anymore, isn't it? And that's the reason I initialized my previous to 31 because the maximum value in this xi is 30. So if I am getting the first value as 30, I know that, okay, I have to modify the array and that's the reason the value with which I initialized my previous was 31. Then I initialized my val variable to power of 2 comma xi with which, I, with which I want to check the divisibility. Then I went over all the values of this array A and if that particular value is divisible by this val, so to this value what I need to add? 2 power xi minus 1 that is basically this val by 2 isn't it? So to that, to that particular element I simply added val by 2. And once I have performed the operation with this particular xi, I will change my previous to xi. That is for the remaining elements, if I get any value that is greater than or equal to xi, I will not perform the operations. At the end, once I have done performing operations with all the elements, I am out, I am just printing my modified array and a new line. This is actually the entire code to this problem. Now how it's actually working, what's actually the time complexity over here? So this actually works in big O of n, this works in big O of q, this for loop takes q, but this for loop you are not running for each and every q, just keep this in mind. At max, this for loop will run for 30 q values, that is for xi equals to 30, then 29, then 28, then 27, then 26, up till 1, okay. So the maximum time this for loop will run is n. So you can say the time complexity in the worst case is n cross 30. So you can say that the total time complexity is nothing but total time complexity is nothing but big O of q plus n into 30 and this will definitely pass the constants right. You are not having q multiplied by n you are having q plus n cross 30. What's the space complexity? What's the space complexity that you are getting? So if you look, if you look over here, we are constructing an array A of size N. So this takes a space of N and we are constructing array X of size Q, which takes a space of Q. So the total space complexity is nothing but big O of Q plus N, which will definitely pass the constraints, isn't it? So this is the entire code to the solution. I hope all of you got it. Thank you.